Rodgers winning football games is a precise science. The chemistry of this team is established early as they won their first six games of the season. The winning formula begins with the proper elements in place. Six-year veteran Stan Humphreys is a quarterback. Running back Natron Means entered this weekend as the leading rusher in the AFC. On defense, there is a distinctive chemical reaction. A volatile mix of talent and intensity. The result, number 55, all-pro linebacker Junior Seau. This season's readings stand to nine wins and three losses. A win tonight would clinch the AFC Western Division title. But tonight, the Los Angeles Raiders are on the slab here in San Diego. It can be a highly charged atmosphere whenever these two West Coast rivals collide, and Junior Seau knows it. They always had that mentality, and they always will have that mentality of being the rough, tough guys around, around the block. And, uh, you know, we're out there to prove them wrong. Yeah, it's alive! It's alive! The Los Angeles Raiders and the San Diego Chargers. Tonight, on ABC's Monday Night Football. The Chargers are gonna let it loose tonight. So get ready. I mean, get ready. Are you ready for some football? A Monday night party. We got friends and Alan and Ben. They're gonna get it kick started. Man, I'm the crew of all the crowd is fight. Cause all my ratty friends are back for Monday night. Looking across the waters of San Diego Harbor to the skyline of the Southern California city. A city that has been home to so many of our servicemen over the years. And San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium is home to the San Diego Chargers. It's sold out tonight as the San Diego Chargers meet the Los Angeles Raiders on Monday Night Football. Hello again, everyone. Frank Gifford with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Glad you're with us tonight. A super ASC matchup. The San Diego Chargers and Los Angeles Raiders. The Chargers come into tonight at 9-3, and, and in this year of crazy playoff possibilities, they have a very simple formula. They win tonight, and they win the AFC Western Division, and they can play their last three games worrying about home field advantage. Going against the Raiders, it will not be that easy. They are 6-6. Six and six. This is a desperate team, and a team that's picked by many at the beginning of the season to go all the way to the Super Bowl. They are a talent-laden team, and Al, you have to wonder if maybe some of the players, some of the management, they've got to be a little concerned what happened along the way. They're a hard team to figure, Frank. When the season began, they had no running game. Now they've got a fairly decent one with Harvey Williams. But the passing game has been a major disappointment. This is a team with people like Rocket Ismail, Alexander Wright, James Jett, Tim Brown. They can't seem to get the ball downfield. And their quarterback, Jeff Hostetler, is coming off a concussion he sustained last week in the game against Pittsburgh. They'll keep a close eye on him. Defensively, they've been playing okay, but in crunch time, they haven't. In the fourth quarter of the season, the Raiders have been outscored 98 to 49. It's as simple as this. Win tonight, and they're back on track toward the playoffs with a mark of seven and six and two of their last three at home. Lose tonight, and this team might as well start thinking about 1995. And then here in San Diego, with an electric crowd, they go against the Chargers, a team that was as hot as any team in the league over the first month and a half, but they've sort of flattened here of late. They sure have, Al. You know, they open up at 6-0 and and look like they're going to run away with things, and since then, they've been in a cycle. It's lose one, win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one. Well, if you look at that, this is a lost week. So how do the Chargers break that cycle? Well, first of all, they're lucky. They get to play three of their last four games here at the Murph. The other way they can break that cycle is by continuing to play really sound, aggressive defense. They have a fabulous rush defense. They play the run well, but they really chase the quarterback. Guys like Leslie O'Neill, Junior Seau, Chris Mims, and they're going against the quarterback tonight in Jeff Hostetler, who's coming after off of a concussion. You know that the Chargers are going to test Hostetler early with a lot of blitzing and a heavy pass rush. The other thing the Raiders do well on offense is run the football, but that kind of plays to a Raiders' strength. Now, the guy the Raiders fear, and justifiably so, is running back Ronnie Harmon. He kills him coming out of the backfield. And he really killed them in their first meeting this season, the game won in Los Angeles by the Chargers, 26-24. Great crowd here tonight. 
a much anticipated game anytime the Raiders come to San Diego it's a much anticipated game and especially on a Monday night Andre Coleman a good looking rookie kick returner averaging 26 yards a run back Jeff Jager to put it in the air and the game is underway in San Diego it floats down to the 11 yard line and Andre Coleman brings it back to the 29 yard line Dan Humphreys, who's had a good deal of success when he's been healthy, and he's coming off surgery on his left elbow, his non-throwing elbow, but he hasn't missed a beat. Natron means the great second year back. Jefferson and Say are the wideouts, and they use a double tight end set with Young and a rookie, Shannon Mitchell. Swain, Kakuzu, Courtney Hall, one of the very best. Malinchik and Stan Brock, the longtime New Orleans Saint right tackle first down from the 29 yard line and it's Natron Means who packs about 250 pounds picking up five up to the 34 Greg Beekert makes the stop good looking front four Harrison the mammoth tackles ball and McLaughlin McLaughlin a rising star and Anthony Smith on the outside Fredrickson is a rookie out of Michigan State Beekert in the middle and Winston Moss Terry McDaniel having another Pro Bowl tackle season, seven picks. Albert Lewis on the other side, Patrick Bates and Eddie Anderson are the hard-hitting safeties. Second and five, and Humphreys to throw for the first time tonight, and it's incomplete, intended for Sean Jefferson. A little behind him, the pressure was put on Stan, and it will be third down and five. Pressure forcing Stan Humphreys to throw that ball away. And this is what the Raiders hope they can do is pressure Humphreys. He is very patient, but he likes to every now and then just take his time, unleash one far downfield, and Chester McLaughlin in there on the pressure. And I'll mention he is one of the great ones already in this game. Third and five. They normally look for Ronnie Harmon here. And the ball is knocked down as Humphreys has it knocked away by Alberto White who comes in in pass rush situations to do exactly what he just did. Normally you see a guy bat a pass it's because he's a long way away from the quarterback that time Alberto White just collapsed the pocket and was only about a foot away from Stan Humphreys when he blocked that ball. What a fine pass rush by the Raiders to get this game started. Tim Brown averaging 13.2 yards on punt runbacks, the league average is about nine. And Brian Wagner just does get it away. And it's a short kick that gets down inside the 40 yard line. The pressure was put on by Albert Lewis, who was a kick block specialist, as well as a great corner for years in Kansas City. And there's a flag down back at the 29 yard line. Jerry Austin is tonight's referee flag right at the line of scrimmage after the kick was made personal foul Graven a fast mask and pulling the player number 40 of the defense mm. 15 yards in first down and so it begins the Raiders much penalized historically they've been much penalized but again they're leading the league Carry Brabham with the penalty and Jeff Hostetler makes the start now for the Raiders and with that concussion last week a very close eye will be kept on him Harvey Williams and the X 49er Rathman in the backfield right and Brown the wide outs and Andrew Glover the tight end they're trying to go to him more now this figured to be a great offensive line when the year began but they have been very ordinary this season Perry with Newski Mosbar Gogan the former Cowboy and Strepanak. Yeah, they've given up 37 sacks on the season. There is Napoleon McCallum, who's on the Raiders' sideline tonight. Now had a chance to visit with him, and we'll be hearing from him at halftime today. A very poignant and touching story. He had that horrific injury on opening night against the 49ers. The Raiders love to go long on their first offensive play, and they find Alexander Wright, who beats the secondary and scores. The Raiders do that so much, it rarely fools the defense. It's been very common for the Raiders on their first play to go deep to soften up the defense. Most teams look for it, but Wright gets free, and the Raiders score. Well, Dwayne Harper and Stanley Richard boxed it up somewhere. They were both back there in double coverage. Harper had the outside. Richard, for, there's Harper, number 28. 
Now he's staying to the outside right where he should be. Now he should get help on the inside from Richard. And for some reason, Richard took the man going to the outside. Something amiss in the secondary, and it pays off six big points for the Raiders. It was a play action, but still, for Stanley Richard to bite that much and be that far out of the play, inexcusable. Jeff Jager for the point after. That was only the 11th catch of the season for Wright. But Burner, who's averaging less than a catch a game, 76 yards, hot them to the right, and a minute 10 into the game, the Raiders lead it 7 to nothing. Together, and that's what happens after you give up a 76 yard touchdown. I did pass. what? You did what? This is no social meeting here. This is these guys trying to figure out how they could have possibly blown the first play of the game. And that guy, Alexander Wright, what a way to get this thing started for the Raiders. Yeah, you give him an inch. He's oh. twice been the fastest man in this game and the fastest man contest. Jeff Jager kicking off again. Andre Coleman, the rookie from Kansas State, will return his second pick, this time from the 18. And actually, that's Ronnie Harmon who takes the kick back to the 37 yard line as we go back and have another look at the opening score. All right, here's Alexander Wright right here. Here's Harper. And then back in the back, here's Stanley Richard. Now let's roll this thing and we'll get him up here down the field a little bit. All right, guys, if he frees it right around here, watch right here. Watch Stanley Richard. He gets caught up on this guy, comes across, and then the break into the middle. And Alexander Wright is wide open. And Stanley Richard to this moment doesn't even realize that the ball is in the air on its way to Alexander Wright. There's no question that Dwayne Harper expected that help from the inside. He didn't get it. Oh, totally. The deep middle belongs to Stanley Richard. And you could see when the ball was halfway down the field, he still was running upfield. He wasn't even aware that the ball had been launched. Chargers now from the 37. Their first possession was three and out. Dan Humphrey on a draw. Natron Means looking for room and picked up two up to the 39-yard line. Oh, Ron Fredrickson and Eddie Anderson converge on the tackle. You know, guys, there just aren't ways to put it into words big enough to describe what that means to the Raiders. They have really been struggling offensively. Last week, they are manhandled by the Pittsburgh Steelers, only scoring three points, only like 175 yards in total offense. And what a confidence booster to get started that way. Second down and eight from the 39-yard line. Flag. Humphrey throws. The catch is made up of the 41 by Alfred Papuno. Short game, but a marker down at the inception of the play at the line of scrimmage. Papuno has missed a couple of weeks with a knee, and they are happy to have him back. All sides, number 91. Lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards. Repeat second down. Well, should we count them tonight? They had 111 coming in, penalties that is. Well, talking to Carl Mock, the offensive line coach of the Chargers, he was going to the officials before the game and talking about the fact that he thinks that Chester McLaughlin and the Jerry Ball line up in the neutral zone a lot. So there is, uh, there's where a little work ahead of time pays off by a coaching staff complaining. McLaughlin, number 91, one of the fine defensive tackles in the game. He is a force. Second down and three, and there's another flag as Natron Means takes it out to the 46-yard line. Greg Beekert makes the stop, and the Raiders are indicating it should be a hold against San Diego. All sides. Might be the same thing. It's the same thing. He was lined up again. Well, uh, Carl Mock ought to get a bonus here right off the bat uh, for talking this thing up. The two coaches, Bobby Ross on the left, Art Shell on the right, and that will... It won't really inhibit a defensive lineman. He's really just got to slide back an inch or two. Now, Jerry Ball is the helmet that is the farthest one forward. He can't be over that ball, and he is. Your helmet cannot be in that neutral zone. I'm not so sure that he wasn't hurt by just having his helmet a couple inches farther out than the rest of his defensive line mates. And there they go offside. He's yeah. off again. Two yep. flags this time, and Humphrey going deep, and it's short. At the 10 yard line, good coverage that time. Sean Jefferson. I think that was by Albert Lewis. Maybe it did bother him, Dan. Yeah, that was Jerry Ball. There's Carl Ball. Outside, number 93. Three strikes. That's amazing. That's already four penalties against the Raiders. I, I, I can't remember the last time I saw 
three consecutive. This is where he actually gets drawn off by Stan Humphrey's hard count. He was not lined up in the neutral zone. He flinched and fell into the zone. Well, after you've been called twice, I think you maybe <laughs> would be a little more cautious. Uh, he wasn't. Well, the Raiders seldom lose that battle. <laughs> Four for the Raiders, none for the Chargers. Raiders have been averaging about eight penalties a game, so they're halfway home already. Satron means to the 45-yard line. Greg Beekert makes the tackle. 12-10 to go in the first quarter. If you're just picking us up on a 76-yard pass from Hostetler to right, it's seven to nothing. The Raiders last year, second most in NFL history, 148 penalties. And coming into tonight's game, they're on a pace to equal that mark. Well, the record's 149, so. They're making a run two years in a row. Lofty ambitions, I guess. <laughs> Much to their head coaches. He can't figure it out. Little. Record was set by the Oilers in 1989. On second and three, Means goes next to nowhere. Finding trouble probing the middle. Eddie Anderson comes up to support. And there's another flag. Yes. Because Nolan Harrison delivers an elbow. He drops Stan Brock. And that's, there's no way, well, that's going to be five penalties. You can't hit a guy out in front of everybody like that. Even if you're hitting back, you can't. There's Anthony Smith who threw the second one. I believe Nolan Harrison was the, the guy who gets called. Harrison 74, Smith is 94. That was uh, quite a right cross. George Foreman would be proud of this one. <laughs> All right, watch the right side of your screen. Brock is getting up there, 67. Oh, he comes over and gives a little shot inside. And that's a retaliatory blow by Nolan Harrison. Unfortunately, <laughs> the first one happens all the time. The second one in front of everybody is automatic. And it always happens like that. Every time you're the second man to deliver the blow, you're going to get the flag. Well, this is... What uh, it takes is a little self-discipline. and. Raiders have a strong lacking in that. First down, San Diego at the 29. Two first downs on this drive. East by penalty. And Humphrey finds the open man. Jefferson for the touchdown. Oh, boy. Beautiful pump fake by Stan Humphreys. I think it was Patrick Bates who was locked up on And a Jefferson. great move by Jeffries going side with that pump fake. Yep. Bates went all the way with it. Yep, it was a beautiful job of setting it up by the receiver and by the quarterback. And Patrick Bates, well, now watch Stan Humphreys right here. That move was simultaneous with a break to the inside by Jefferson. Bates bit on it, and what a start to a football game this is. Bates playing in place of the injured Derek Hoskins, who's in uniform, but Bates gets the start tonight. Carney now for the point after. Sataya. And we played only three minutes, 51 seconds. But what a wild beginning in San Diego. Raiders seven. Great start. Raiders seven. Bates fought it all the way. And wide open is John Jefferson. Well, at least there wasn't a penalty on the play. <laughs> A terrific rivalry two original American Football League franchises the city's now separated by just 125 miles the Raiders of course began in Oakland and came south the Chargers began as the LA Chargers and played in the Coliseum in 60 and then they came south and these uniforms they're wearing tonight are circa 1961 mm -hmm. something they ought to go south Rocket Ismail takes the Carney kickoff from the 11 yard line brings it back to the 25 where he's met by a host of Chargers led by Eric Castle. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Chrysler and the new Chrysler Series Sports Sedan. Merrill Lynch for our clients. The difference is planning. The difference is Merrill Lynch. And Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. Goodyear Blimp Eagle providing the aerial views tonight. High above San Diego Jack Murphy Stadium. Beautiful early December evening. Rain last night, but no rain today. Perfect night. Capacity crowd and Harvey Williams takes it up to the 30-yard line. We look at the Raiders offensively. Now San Diego defensively. And they play a base 4-3. Mims having a fine year. Lee Ruben Davis, the huge former Cardinal, and Leslie O'Neill having another terrific season. 
Griggs, Gibson, and Junior Seau, one of the very best. They normally stack them behind a defensive tackle. Gordon and Harper on the corners. Carrington and Richard are the safeties. And Stanley, of course, has already been very instrumental in the game tonight as he was burned by Wright on the touchdown pass. Hostetler on second and five. Stepping up. Throws just before he gets to the line of scrimmage, and the catch is made by Tim Brown, their leading receiver. That's his 67th catch of the season. Dennis Gibson makes the stop first down L.A. Dan talked about the number of sacks the Raiders have given up. There's Tim Brown. He complained not only in a quiet way because that's his manner last week that he was not used as he should have been used. And he is a great receiver, but the offensive line have given up 28 sacks on Jeff Hosteller. Now, he is a very mobile quarterback. That is a lot of sack for a quarterback like Jeff Hosteller, and he has paid the price. First and ten at the 40-yard line. The game tied at seven, and Harvey Williams, who appeared to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage, gets it out to the 44. Leslie O'Neill makes the tackle. You know, the funny thing about Tim Brown, he's complaining about not getting the ball enough, but he has made 31 more catches than their second leading receiver. <laughs> You're right. Six receptions coming into tonight, having a big year. Let's guys check out Junior Seau and the collision he's going to have with Tom Rathman. He comes on a run blitz here, right there. He's met by Tom Rathman. That's a good job by Rathman of taking on one of the best linebackers in the game in his own backfield like that. That's a lot earlier than Tom would have liked to have done it. On second and six. Harvey Williams on a draw that doesn't fool anybody. It'll be third and long with 8.55 to go in the first quarter. I think Andrew Glover had that mixed up a little bit. The tight end breaking right into where the draw was supposed to hit. Looking a little confused in there. Glover the tight end. Williams was able to squeeze a little yardage out of that. After he was initially stopped behind the line of scrimmage, there's Seau lining up behind the defensive tackle. It's third down and four with Brown in motion. Hostelda protected well. He swings it out to Harvey Williams, and Williams does a nice job. He had to reach for it. He was off balance, but he was able to have the presence of mind to get to that first down marker and beyond. And it's a seven-yard pickup. Frank, give Harvey a star on his helmet. Boy, what a play by Williams. That's a dead play from the beginning with that poorly a thrown pass. We've got a fine block by Andrew Glover, the tight end, to break it down the sidelines. There's Williams. Andrew Glover will get the block on Junior Seau and avoided the clip in doing so, but that made the first down. Game tied at 7 with 7.40 to go in the first. First down. And Williams runs right into O'Neal and Reuben Davis. Reuben Davis lifted at about 320. He can add about 20. Some big guys. Chargers come into tonight's game after 12 games. Third in the league against the rush. They are a tough team to run the football against. In fact, they're sixth overall in the NFL defensively. When you're only giving up 82 yards a game running, you're doing well. In your rush defense, that's superior. Bill Arnsparger, Parker, the defensive coordinator, doing... Another of his masterful jobs, Bobby Beathard providing the ink to paint the canvas, and they've done a great job defensively. Second and nine at the 46-yard line. Hawk throws, and it's nearly picked off. Darian Gordon almost intercepted it. Third and nine. Get used to hearing that name, Darian Gordon. He was the Chargers' number one draft choice last year, and he is on his way to stardom in this league. He gets the legal hit, playing the zone defense, and then, boy, good first to the football. Oh, you have to like something about it. He will take a chance. He's a youngster, first-round pack pick a year ago out of Stanford, but he is a chance taker and a game breaker. There's Bill Einsparger. Been around this league. Head coach of the Jazz one time with LSU. Formerly with the Miami Dolphins. Third down and nine. Hostetler flushed out. Flag is down. And the pass is low and incomplete at the 31. And that play may never have yeah, been official. I, I thought I heard a whistle, and in fact I did. It was blown dead, even though the crowd is so noisy, the players couldn't Before hear the, the whistle. Snap, the 25 second clock expired. Delay of game on the offense. It's still third down. Well, this. 
we're going to be into double digits here before long. I think that's what, number six? Mm -hmm. I mean, that might be understandable. That's Fred Bolitnikoff. He's relaying the plays in from Tom Walsh, the offensive coordinator high above. But, I mean, it gets so loud. Junior Seau actually is orchestrating this crowd. When they get ready to do a blitz, that's when he whips up the frenzy of the crowd so Hostetler can't change the play at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. He's done it a couple times already, and it's been very effective. Third and 14, Raiders at their own 49. The game is tied 7-7, 6.45 remaining in the opening quarter. Here comes Another flag. Brown makes a beautiful catch for what would be a first down. And Greg Strepanak <laughs> is going to be called for holding the tackle. This isn't funny. Holding on the 78 of the offense. Chris Mims called it for yeah. us. It's a classic rip move. They call it the rip when you drive that right arm and try to get it underneath and get leverage on the offensive tackle. Art Shell knows a little bit about that. There it is right in front of us. Mims is 94, Strepanik 78. There's the rip right there. He gets it up underneath, and Strepanik stays with it and drives him into the ground. But that's really drawn by Mims. That's a just a very, very good look at what that rip move looks like. Third and 24. Better look at a hold at the 39. Haas has to get him to the San Diego 37, and they try a middle screen, and Harvey Williams gets taken down at the 41 on a beautiful tackle by the ex-Dolphin David Briggs. Well, what we need here in San Diego is a little excitement from the crowd. I, I don't know what people say who say that Southern California crowds are a little laid back. They get here late and are quiet. That's not the case here in Jack Murphy Stadium. Charger fans are an emotional roller coaster. Watch Seau now make the play here, as he so often does. He, <laughs> well, if he could say he took Harvey Williams, but forced him to the outside. We'll give him that. He's had a tough couple of weeks. Jeff Goss at the kick. Darian Gordon, who ran one back last week against the Rams, and it's a bad kick. And something you don't see off the foot of Gossett very often. Jeff third in the league coming in, averaging 44.5. 531 left in the quarter. The game is tied 7-7. No, are you ready for some football? Yes, sir! Are you ready for some football? Yes, sir! All right. That, uh, <laughs> that looks like one of our production meetings with Kenny Wolf up front. <laughs> right. <laughs> we have to go through that every Monday morning. And I am ready for some football now. Yeah. I, I, wonder, I wonder what kind of enthusiasm they, if he just said, are you ready for some leave? Oh, right <laughs> up the road is Camp Pendleton where a lot of Dyrenes have gone through their first camp. Big military presence, of course, in and around San Diego. Chargers take the ball after a 14-yard Jeff Gossett punt. And this is Ronnie Harmon, who is their third down specialist for the most part. Doesn't see very much action on first and second down. Stopped by Albert Lewis near midfield. we got a Raider that's uh, pretty slow getting up down here. That's Lewis who's been yeah. hurt. Albert has missed some time. He's got a sprain. He's got a sprained knee. That's been the cause of him missing. He didn't play last week. And Albert Lewis, the very talented Raider cornerback, the former chief, still down on the ground. Injury timeout. He's able to walk off under his own power. The uh, Raiders, though, are missing Lionel Washington, the cornerback. He's hurt calf muscle. And so they're a little short in the secondary coming in tonight. On second and five, it's Ronnie Harmon again who gets to the 46-yard line. It'll be Harmon, third and one with under five minutes to play in the quarter. That's and James four. Trapp. He's the uh, guy that's and taken the four, spot four, over at the right cornerback position, just a second-year player. And uh, they are dangerously thin. Albert is up and looks like he's ready to come back into the game, and the Raiders need him back out on the field. Grab one of those sprinters. Uh, they seem to collect with the Raiders, an Olympic sprinter from Clemson. Lewis is back in the game. They also have Hoskins, who had been hurt. He's healthy now, but they're dinged up in the secondary. On a counter, Harmon goes nowhere. So the Chargers, who normally only use Harmon in third down situation, run him on first, second, and third down and go three and out. He stopped by Chester McLaughlin. And yes, I think stopped is a very <laughs> appropriate word. Brockton, 310 pounds. Harmon, right around 2'5. 
Brian Wagner who's been with five teams to punt Tim Brown one of the best in the league at running back kicks the Heisman Trophy winner at Notre Dame as a senior real duel for that championship yeah this year in the NFL Dave Meggett leading the league fair catch is called for and made at the 18 yard line Raiders will take over there with 337 to go in the quarter after a 31 yard punt LA 7 San Diego 7. She really broken there <laughs> a couple game time 7 7 337 to go in the first quarter and Hostetler buying time throws and it's Andrew Glover the tight end making the catch that's an eight yard pickup as he hauls it in at the 26 David Griggs the linebacker stops him there Picked up assignment for Griggs a Miami former Miami Dolphin that the Dolphins use as a defensive end trying to cover Andrew Glover a fine athlete as a tight end you saw the Raider chain of command there Tom Walsh was up in the press box the offensive coordinator calling down the plays into the headset of Fred Belitnikoff who in turn calls them into Hostetler. Calvin Jones is now in the game at running back a rookie from Nebraska Jones gets the ball on second and two and picks up the first down Calvin to the 36 Darren Carrington making the tackle big series here for Andrew Glover he makes a reception on first down and then goes in motion that time and shows you really the versatility needed by a tight end he has to turn at the line of scrimmage and make a, a block right at the point of attack here's a guy that when he came into the NFL a former basketball player was green as green could be and he is really blossoming into one of the league's better tight ends this guy's going to be around a long time 10 yard gain for Jones the longest of his very brief career and a whistle before the inception Raiders don't even look they just walk backwards ball start center just the ball number 72 five yards it's still first down I mean that entire Raider team was walking backwards before the call was even made that's Don Mosbar the center he's nursing a bad ankle but he has been a rock let's see if he moves the ball yep that is simulating a snap junior say right on top of Mosbar that's a good spot by the official that's that's illegal First and five at the 31. Short drop by Hostetter. Then intended for Brown and incomplete. Raider bench, Steve Ortmeyer and company on a first and 15 1 interference. Darian Gordon with the coverage. Now Gordon lined up right on top of Tim Brown as he came off the line of scrimmage. I think Brown was complaining that he was manhandled beyond the five yard limit. He has every right to complain. They have called. They call this on every occasion. No. Yep. What he did was almost pick it off. Mm -hmm. There's a late hit. That's Coming really by Stanley Richard. That's probably what was really drawing his temper. Second and 15 at the 31. For a Raider to complain about that. Another flag for a chain. Yeah, and this again. play didn't even take place either because. The whistles are blowing, but the crowd is so loud. This is louder than any dome I can think of. I think Hosteller is saying there was one second. He can... For the snap was made, the 25 second clock expired. Delay of game on the offense. This, this is really pathetic. Yeah. It's, I, I, Art Shell is going to Please have. Please reset the clock to 2 0 0. A volcanic two, zero, eruption zero. on the Raiders' sideline here before long. Nine penalties. And we are still in the first quarter of play. Incredibly, there are two minutes left in the first quarter. But when, if, when the numbers are kept to record a record for a, a one penalty, they've tied the record. It is. And they have two minutes to go, two minutes to break it. Calvin Jones up to the 28 yard line on second, second and 20. Calvin Jones. Steve Hurt reading our minds or something. Yeah, I guess the that's the record for Seattle. the 94 season, nine mm -hmm. and a quarter. That's the this year. That's not an all time record. And we still got a lot of time to go. The all time record is not kept or available, but we'll check out the record for most penalties in the game because they're on a pace right now to break that I'll guarantee you third and 18 at the 28 yard line with a minute and 20 to go in the opening 
quarter and the game tied at seven. And Hostetler, another flag. He gets to the 30-yard line. It'll be fourth and long pending the call. Flag down in the secondary all the way up at the 45-yard line. The record for penalties in the game for one team is 22. Right now they're on a pace for 36. Well, you'd have to think this is going to go against San Diego somehow back in the secondary. Well, Jet was complaining that Dwayne Harper had illegal use of hands to the face. Number 28 of the defense. Five yards, automatic first down. It is Dwayne Harper working against James Jet. Well, what a penalty because the Raiders were in a third and forever situation and even though it's only a five-yard penalty, it's that automatic first down mm -hmm. that keeps this drive alive for the Raiders. It's about 15 yards downfield. A move is going to come to our right, and there's the use of the hand. They're saying Harper actually hit Jet in the face. He did. And that, uh, that's a big break for Los Angeles. First down at the 35-yard line. Settler swings it out to Tom Rathman, and the former 49er gets across the 50 and is wrestled down at the 47-yard line by David Griggs. Tom Rathman, who came out of the backfield to catch so many passes for San Francisco, makes the reception here, and that is only his 17th of the season. I well, we think they'd use him a little more effectively out of the backfield as a receiver because he did so well with the 49ers. He had figures 50 and 60 receptions over a couple of years with the 49ers. It's never been a big part of the Raider passing game yeah. throwing to their running back. Would be a bad idea to put it in. They split Harvey Williams to the left as a wide receiver. Keep Rathman in the backfield and Hostetler throws and the catch is made by Rocket Ismail at the 37 yard line. That's close to a first down and that will be the final play of the opening quarter. End of one, Raiders seven, Chargers seven, and back we come with Monday Night Football after this message and a word from our ABC station. Floating above San Diego, Jack Murphy Stadium, which was constructed in the late 60s, has been the home of the San Diego Padres since 1969. Chargers came in here after beginning their San Diego career at the Balboa Stadium, old Balboa Stadium. It's also the site of uh, Super Bowl 22 back in January of 1988. The Redskins and the Denver Broncos. We were here that day. 42 to 10 was the final score. Doug Williams had that fabulous day and the Redskins scored 35 points in the second quarter. And they had a running back that ran for over 200 yards Tim, that day. Timmy Smith. Timmy Smith who <laughs> Doug Williams and Tim Smith disappeared. Well, that's what happens shining moment. Yep. when a coach sees his team penalized nine times in a the quarter. There's a little consultation going on with the officiating. Oh, well, we asked him straight out last time. What do you do? Uh, and he says, I focus on it every week. I try to talk to him. I try to explain what's doing to us. And such a look of frustration came over his face when we asked him that. We didn't want to pursue it. <laughs> mm. Of course, he also weighed about 280. Start the second quarter in San Diego. The game is tied at seven. It's first and ten for the Raiders, and it's Ismael on an end around. And the rocket takes off, picks up a first down, and out of bounds he goes at the 24-yard line. Oh, yeah, Leslie O'Neill had him right in his sights, but uh, that's asking an awful lot of a 270-pound defensive end to take on Ismael. 13-yard gain. Let's get an update from Lynn Swan. Lynn? Al, Junior Seau came into this game with a pinched nerve in his left shoulder. He told me before the game he has it double padded to try and protect it, but if someone hits it, he could have an almost an instant loss of strength in that left arm. What he's got to do in this ball game is make sure he plays head up on people, try and protect the arm a little bit, and use his right arm as much as possible. Al? From the 24-yard line, Harvey Williams picks up a yard, and that injury may have uh, caused probably the worst outing of the season last week for Seau. He missed a lot of tackles in the game here against the Rams. You know how that had to hurt him, too. And to find out that something was bothering him, you had to wonder as you looked at the game against the Rams, he missed at least four clean shots, and, and they told us even more. And, uh, of course, it's due to a pinched nerve in his neck. He really had a difficult time lifting that left arm through much of that game. Second and nine at the 23. Early second quarter, the game tied at seven. Hossetler has to 
bring it back down, and Leslie O'Neill got there first, and Reuben Davis helps to finish him off. Coverage sack, though. Uh, good coverage on the part of the Chargers, picking up the Raider receivers. Hop settler, no place to put it. If Leslie gets credit for that entire sack, that'll be 11 and a half on the season. Here he is working against Gerald Perry. And we've got holding against San Diego on the play here. And he gets that left arm on top of Hostetler just as the Haas is trying to throw, but this will be another automatic first down for the Los Angeles Raiders. This is the second time this drive. It's been kept alive by a penalty that's provided an automatic first down. Never got the uh, audio call from Jerry Austin as to who was responsible, but it's an automatic first at the 18-yard line. And it's a little toss to Harvey Williams. And he doesn't go very far. Half a yard, maybe one. Tackled at the 17 by Leslie O'Neill. Looking all the world for like a student body left. Quick pursuing defense of the Chargers nails are right at the line of scrimmage. Well, it's one of the things you get by a guy like Leslie O'Neill. He's right to the right of your screen, but he's a smallish defensive end. Leslie only weighs about 265 pounds, and then in this age of behemoths, he's rather small. But what he does have is great speed for that guy, Bill Arnsbarger, the defensive coordinator. He can scoop. Tenth play of the drive, second and nine, and Harvey Williams fights his way to the 15-yard line just inside the 15. It'll set up a third down and six. There's Tom Walsh, and he's calling the plays into the headset of Fred Bolitnikoff, the great wide receiver who in turn is talking to Hostetler. And one would like to think that they would like to work Tim Brown. They're inside the red zone. They can't give him the kind of coverage they can in the middle of the field. And they'll have to play him a little tight. Gives him an opportunity to break away. Third and six at the 14-yard line. They put Brown in motion. Hostetler comes to the near side. And seeks the first down and dives. And I believe yep, he has it. He got it. Just yep. inside the marker. The ball carrier. He guts the guy. He's grimacing there that we've already documented the fact that he went out at the end of the first half. He's going to go out again, I think. But I don't think it has anything to do with his head. He was holding his hand. The Haas now is down on a knee. He's actually gone down to the field. And Vince Evans is going to have to get ready in a hurry. He's looking for his helmet. Is that mine? Mm. Well, Jeff Hostetler is down. He's grabbing his left arm. He kind of did a vicious roll when he out he landed Just watch him land on his right elbow right here right there that landing a lot of times will hurt a guy's shoulder sideline and we're i'm so looking at his right shoulder and his right elbow landing he gets stepped on his left hand by darian gordon we've got a, a look at it here forget the right arm look at his left hand as it goes flush on the turf right there he gets stepped on by gordon and it did a lot of damage to the top of Jeff Hostetler's hand. It appears to be cut. They've got gauze on it. Certainly inadvertent on the part of Gordon. And Jeff Hostetler replaced by that guy, Vince Again. Evans. Vince Evans, 39 years old, drafted by the Bears in 1977. Played half the game last week. First and goal. Harvey Williams gets strung out and taken down for a loss of two by David Griggs. It'll be second and goal at the nine with 11.30 to go in the first half and the game tied at seven as they work on Hawks. We might see him coming back. It's his left arm. And if you want to talk about tough quarterbacks, and we've got two of them tonight, Stan Humphreys is playing three weeks after he dislocated his elbow with a brace on his left elbow. Well, what we're doing... Settler has played through so many things that I've seen in the past with the Giants and also with the Raiders. A couple points. It, it, if it's a cut, I couldn't agree with you more, Frank. He'll be back in there. The question, I think, now are their broken bones. Second oldest player in the league. Only the Rams tackle. Jackie Slater is older. And on second and goal, the catch is made by Rackman. But he gets banged down at the six-yard line. Darian Gordon coming up from the secondary along with the sheriff, Stanley Richard. Pretty good run support by Darian Gordon. We saw him earlier in the game making a break on the ball and playing the football the way a corner should. 
a lot of guys though who are that good of a cover guy aren't much on supporting the run that was a good lick by Gordon continuing to work on the hand of Jeff Hostetler and meanwhile the 39 year old Vince Evans once again has to take over third and goal the 14th play of the drive from the six Brown in motion Evans guns it over the middle back to the end zone touchdown rocket Ismail well that's good work by Vince Evans standing in the pocket he got good protection but he waited the Ishmael cleared opened up waited a long time I tell you that's tough to come off the bench perform like that not even a chance to warm up on the sidelines and he fired a strike for the touchdown well, he got good pass protection look at the pocket that's afforded to Vince Evans and he's got the throwing lane right up the middle where he wanted to go Beautiful. with the football what a look at it perfect work by the Raider offensive line Jager for the point after Vince Evans throws his first touchdown pass of the season and the 45th of a long career 14 7 Raiders they had the hand completely wrapped and shook his head and they had to take it off and they're putting on what appears to be just a large band-aid which will cover the outside of the hand. He'll be back. 14 to 7 Los Angeles. It's a short kickoff by Jeff Jager and is fielded at the 20-yard line by the rookie Andre Coleman. And he gets taken down after a six-yard run back at the 26-yard line. Aaron Wallace stops him there. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer creating a higher standard. Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up and never lets you down, make it a Bud Light. And Hertz, for business, for pleasure, nobody does it exactly like Hertz. We talk about the fact that the Raiders had nine penalties against them in the first quarter, but really the big story of that scoring drive was that it was kept alive by two defensive penalties against the Chargers that both resulted in automatic first downs. It kept that thing going. Stan Humphreys from the 26-yard line on first down. A little dump-off pass to Natron Meads. And he gets taken down at the 29-yard line by their top draft pick, Rob Fredrickson, who never gave an inch. Yeah, that was a pass play you called. Better you than me. Hmm. <laughs> Stan Humphreys, no one to throw the ball to, and you know, I'm not going to run it. Here, you take it. <laughs> and you see the reason, too, because here it is. I don't know if you're all babe. I don't know if Fredrickson's trying to get rid of a cobweb or he lost hmm. the contact or he's got some grass in his eye. There's a running back who's heavier than the linebacker tackling him by about 10 pounds. Oh, means again. Moves his way out to the 38 yard line in the first down. Tackled by Anderson and Bates. Well, he carries 245 pounds about as delicately as any big back I've seen. He is incredible maneuverability. He's, his weight is all in the upper part of his body. He, he can really apply a crunch on a tackler. Watch this. Oh, what a good lead block he had out front by rookie Shannon Boy, Mitchell. And Eddie Anderson paid a price in taking Means down. Number 33, he took a shot. Nine minutes left in the half. Raiders 14, Chargers 7. First down from the 38-yard line. Humphrey. Guns one to midfield to the 50-yard line. Tony Martin makes the catch. First down. Martin coming off a game in which he dropped two short touchdown passes. Swain exhorting his teammate after losing his helmet. The left tackle, 12-yard pickup. And Haas is throwing on the sideline. They're getting ready to. Take a look at the former Miami Dolphin. He came here this past season. He's working against Albert Lewis back in the game. And Breaks to the inside, works against the zone, finds an opening, and a good delivery there by Humphreys. Have the Chargers even thrown at Terry McDaniel yet? Not hit in his direction to no. that point. Oh, Means picking and threading and picks up just and a yard. Means. Nolan Harrison is there, a little pushy shoving. There's That's Terry cool. McDaniel, the all-world corner, who's on the other side. He's already got seven interceptions. I think for a man-to-man -man, uh, defender, he's right up there maybe with Deion Sanders. He's, He's he as is good a as they get. Great player. Unfortunately, if you're the other Raider cornerback, whether that be Lionel <laughs> Washington or Albert Lewis, you're going to get more than your fair share of business uh, during the course of a football game. Mm -hmm. Aeneas Williams of the Cardinals leads the league in interceptions with eight. It's second and ten. 
Humphreys buys time, and the catch is made a little short of the first down. Mark Say, his first reception of the game to the 42-yard line. It'll be third and two. In front of Terry McDaniel. No sooner yeah. than we talk about sure. it, they go right at Terry McDaniel. Here we go. Next Monday night, you've got Kansas City, a critical game now after the loss to Denver yesterday, going to Miami, losing to Buffalo last night. So a vital game for both teams. Chiefs and Dolphins next Monday night. Joe Montana is listed as highly questionable for next Monday. He was in civvies yesterday. Marty Schottenheimer said, quote today, I have no idea if he can play next Monday night. On third and two, going deep and incomplete. On third and two, they go to Tony Martin down the left sideline, but the coverage was there. And it's fourth down. Well, that's good coverage. Tony Martin has great speed. His hands have always been a problem for him. You mentioned the two touchdowns he dropped. He dropped a lot of them down in Miami, but he has he has classic speed. He has classic moves, and he had just a little bit of an opening, but it would have had to been a perfect pass as Albert Lewis was stride for stride with him. Stan dropped that ball out there just about five feet too far. It was almost perfect. Brian Wagner to punt to try to pin the Raiders deep. Brown back to receive it. High floating short kick. Flag is down. And the kick will go out of bounds at about the 27-yard line. But there's a marker down clear across the field on this side, the near side. Jerry Austin, we're going to have to send him down some throat lozenges <laughs> at halftime. It was fourth and two. After the kick, illegal use of hands to the face. Number 47, 10 yards, first down. Donald Frank, another big penalty. And they never end. And look at Art Shell. He shakes his head. He said he shook his head last night when we asked him about it. 646, Raiders hand when we come back. Well, we'll have to see about Joe Montana next week because he's listed as highly questionable. Jeff Hostetler, though, who had to come out when his hand was stepped on, is back in with the bandage after Evans came in and threw a touchdown pass. First and 10 from the 17-yard line, and Harvey Williams takes it out to the 30-yard line. And a Raider first down. He's tackled by Junior Seau. Former first-round draft pick of the Kansas City Chiefs at came to the Raiders this year as a free agent and really didn't start uh, well this is his seventh start that he's made but he's up over 700 yards rushing what they haven't been able to do is break any big plays running the football I think like 28 yards is their longest run of the entire year and here is Williams again and that's a minus two or three Sean Lee makes the tackle what we would call a rushing sack. Yes, they're glad to have Sean Lee back. He didn't play in the game last week. He's got a cap injury as well, and he's a force in the middle. With Reuben Davis and Sean Lee, the Chargers have done what they really wanted to do in the middle, and that was to put some beef in there, some really big, wide bodies to make it hard to run up the middle. That way they could move Mims back to defensive end, compliment Leslie O'Neill's quickness. It's worked. Second and 13. Five and a half minutes left in the half. The Raiders on top by seven. They split Williams to the left. They go look out. Haas buys time. Goes, finds the open man. It is James Jack. Goodbye. James Jack is in two. Oh. San Diego territory and is wrestled down at the 19 yard line by Stanley Richard. Oh, we now know Stanley Richard has some speed. He caught an Olympic class sprinter, and what a great pass by Jeff Hostetler. After he Under got away, the pain and duress, he, and after he got away from Sean Lee, Sean Lee is all over it. He had across the body, and he had it on a string. He had something on it. Cordell, you can throw the ball that far, but you won't have anything on it. Boy, effort. Take a look at Jet. Right about now, Hostetler is in a lot of trouble. He rolls out. And Jet gives him a target. 54 yards. Harvey Williams picks up three. This is what the Raider fans have wanted and expected all season long. We mentioned at the top, the passing game has been a huge disappointment. They've been unable to get the ball deep until tonight. 76 yards to right. 
and 54 yards here to James Jett. That's what Raider fans have expected all season. Sean Lee is over on the Chargers bench. He uh, he looks a little gassed. Raiders tonight, 194 yards through the air. Jets' longest reception until then had been 31. It is second and eight, and Haas throws over the middle. It's kicked and it's kicked off at the 10-yard line by David Briggs, who's been all over the field tonight. Harvey Williams, the intended receiver, the pass tip Briggs with the pick. Oh, and Haas had made a great effort getting out of trouble to get the ball to Harvey Williams who should have had that ball, had a little something on it, but it was through the hands and picked off by Greg. Hostetler in trouble, off the hands of Harvey Williams, an easy ball to handle, and into the hands of David Greg. The advantage would be vital, but the visioning team has won the last four meetings and six of the last seven, and lead here tonight as well. It is a great scene and a great crowd, though, isn't it? I don't know how it could be any better. And stop and think about it. As far from a pure excitement level, this is as good as it gets here, Jack Murphy. First and 10, San Diego at the 21 yard line. Natron Means picks up two, and it's a vital game for the Raiders at 6 and 6 as they try to stay alive. And San Diego on the verge of clinching the AFC West and the fate of San Diego in its own hands in terms of home field advantage throughout the playoffs. The Raiders go 6 and 7. They have got to be in deep trouble. They. We have Denver and Kansas City both at seven and six. They're two back, and the Chargers lock it up tonight. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a long trip back those 125 miles tonight, Al. If they lose it, mm -hmm. it is second down and eight at the 23-yard line for the Chargers. Ronnie Horman in motion, and Humphrey throws up to the 29-yard line. Dwayne Young makes the catch. Patrick Bates with the stop. I think Humphreys was looking for an offside as the it was quite it? a pass rush that time. You know, the one thing I like about the Raiders is the fact that this is such a game of desperation for them and the way they've come out and started to play this thing. I mean, this, this is a team that obviously spent a good week of preparation. They're focused, uh, they're hitting hard, and they're doing things differently. They, they are, like you mentioned, throwing the ball downfield, doing the things they do best but haven't done. And I think that's what they have to do the final four games of the year. And there's a classic example yeah. right there as Natron Means takes it. Al Davis watching Eddie Anderson and others lead that charge as they blitz. They stop him for a loss, create the punt with 240 to go in the half. What a pure run blitz that was. Everyone taking a gap, and it paid off. They see Eddie Anderson, number 33, sneaking up. Everyone hitting a gap and means nowhere to go. Loss on the play, fourth down, and the Raiders will get it in good field position. Brian Wagner to punt, Tim Brown to bring it back. Well, you love to see this after you turn the ball over, you get it right back. Brown at the 39, mini juggle. And then he brings it up to the 49-yard line, and there's a marker down. Of course, Raiders have already been penalized 10 times in the half, but still lead 14-7. I remember what Art Shell said last night. We didn't have what we had less than a handful of penalties against the Steelers and got our brains beat out. Maybe we're better off getting a lot of penalties. And if you know, don't don't say it. You might get what you wish for. And they're getting it tonight. I think this one's against them as well. Number Illegal 40. From behind. Number 40 during the return. Ten yards. It's first down. Terry Brabham, second time he's been whistled tonight. Our argument against that. Vince Lombardi had the. Well, we'll take a look at this first. Most penalties per game. I think it was Vince Lombardi who had the fewest. Right. Well, Art Shell, Joe Walton, Jerry Glanville, Buddy Ryan would figure to be on that list, and he is, and Monty Clark, among those who've coached at least 50 games. And the fewest, as Frank mentioned, yeah. Vince Lombardi, whose teams averaged just 4.12 penalties per game in his one, illustrious one, career. Five NFL championships and two Super Bowls, and that might say something. At the 32-yard line, first and 10. Rackman in motion. Haas. Flush. Tip. Incomplete. Harvey Williams, the intended receiver, the pressure put on by Mims. The Raiders next week go home. It's going to be a wild situation if the Raiders win because they have Denver at home next Sunday. And John Elway, as you know, was hurt yesterday. Strained muscle in his knee, mildly strained knee ligaments. May play this weekend. It's about 50 50. It's unknown. At this time, otherwise, it's Hugh Millen who led them to the overtime win at Kansas City. And we already talked about Joe Montana, highly questionable next week. 
tough in this division, too. Rick Meyer is out for the season after surgery on his left thumb in Seattle. And the two banged-up guys here tonight in Hostetler and Humphreys as Harvey Williams takes it up to the 36-yard line. And it takes us to the two-minute warning. Sayal makes the stop, and the Raiders lead by seven. They'll play those tees way back. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> two minutes in the half. Third and seven. Raiders from the 35-yard line. Hostetler throws. There's a flag down, and again, that's one of those plays that I think was whistled dead before the snap. Raiders walking east again. Before the snap, double clutch on the center. Five yards. <laughs> It's still third down. That's twice Please on the most part. the clock for two minutes. Twelve penalties. We mentioned the record for most penalties in the game is 22, done twice, each time in 1944. Let's look at it again. There's Mose Bar, the center. And they called him for a false start because he, he rocked back a little bit. The ball didn't double clutch so much as Mose Bar arched his back and kind of simulated a snap. He double plus. Wow. Third down and 12. Hostetler throws. Rackman can't make the catch. The coverage was right there. Sean Van Hort on top of him, and the Chargers are going to get the ball back. Al Davis venting his displeasure. Davis has a cut lower lip. I just noticed that, and that was, uh, I think... He got the residue smacked. from a pregame collision. One of the Chargers, we think it was Tony Martin, running some pass patterns before the game ran into Al on the sideline. He didn't do it deliberately, though. Let's no. say point that out. Never burn your bridges. No, <laughs> you bet. Got oh! oh I, that, that just might be a penalty. Uh, Dan Land bangs into him. But there's no, there's no reason in the world to do that. Yep. Darian Gordon clearly calling for the fair catch. But even if he didn't, you have to give him room to catch the ball. Sure. You don't, uh, you don't see many like that. But I think well, he, we he should never have to see it twice. He, what he did is he, he has to be given room, obviously, before the ball comes down. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised they threw him out. Interference with the opportunity to make a fair catch. Number 25. 15 yards. Uh, first down. Well, some things just can't be explained. I'll tell you, you can't I have that head in there like that either. I, I have no idea what could possibly be going through the mind of Dan Lamb. That is, I, and I think Art Shell is telling, uh, that's a bonehead award. That we haven't tossed a bonehead in a while. That's as good a bonehead as we have seen. Well, this year is flat dangerous, too. I mean, well, that's what they defined last year. You cannot hit with the crown of your helmet. Tommy Ross wants him thrown out of the game. He does. That's yeah. exactly and he should be thrown out. It's still not going to do any more than the 15 yards, but I... You can't... You can't make a point. If Dan Land was ejected, you certainly couldn't say it was unfair. That's just... Uh, deliberate. Moronic. Well, certainly deliberate. I, See what you hit. And he puts the top of his hat down, put it right on the hat. Puts the Chargers at their own 45. They have all of their timeouts remaining. On first and 10. Five-man rush, and Humphreys almost goes down, and then does. Aaron Wallace hit him first, and then Anthony Smith Humphreys. knocks him to the ground. Drop for a loss. Stop by number 94, Anthony Smith. Another look at the land play, as you can see, hitting him with the crown of the helmet. A nice close-up view here. And Gene Washington, who works in the National Football League's office, is the guy that uh, takes a look at plays like that, determining later whether they're worthy of a fine. On third and 17, it is incomplete. Three Raiders were there providing the coverage. It was second and 17. Eddie Anderson was the man who broke it up with 120 to go in the first half. Raiders have now been penalized 13 times for 110 yards, but still lead 14 to 7. Yeah, both these teams have a difficulty protecting the quarterback. They might be well advised to shorten up the pass game somewhere. They're all 
Both the quarterbacks trying to go deep downfield and having a hard time getting rid of it. That's one way to solve it. To convert, he's got to get it to the Raider 45. And he does to the 39. Mark Shea makes a terrific catch. Oh, Eddie Anderson has played the ball. And How does Stan Humphrey great effort by Humphrey. rolls all the way to the right, not known as a really strong arm quarterback, wings this thing all the way across field, beating the Raider defense to his receiver. That's some throw. First down and timeout, San Diego. <laughs> there you go. Oh, he makes a, uh, a very impressive throw. You know what he did? He rolls out on this, though, and the Raiders, they're not used to this. He, they don't you do this a lot with the Chargers. Raiders reacted to it. Eddie Anderson got himself quite way across the field, and Humphrey strong-armed it back completely across the field for the first. On first down from the 39-yard line, it's incomplete at the 34-yard line. Tony Martin couldn't hold on. Donald Frank, a former Charger, provided the coverage. That was really good coverage by Donald Frank. A little unorthodox. Has to do a complete spin to get it all the way back into it, but it still worked. Take a look at this. This good is not that this should have been caught, too. He dropped it before he was even hit. Frank in his first year with the Raiders after four years here. Flag, Humphrey throws. That is in and out of the hands of Sean Jefferson. Albert Lewis comes up with it, but the play whistled dead. Anthony Smith was jumping. The Raider defensive end. Offside on the defense. <laughs> Five yards, still second down. Humphreys is doing a pretty good job. It's, it's a very loud hard count, but he's also bobbing his head a little bit. Watch, watch Stan's head move here a little bit when he makes that. There it is right there. That's Anthony Smith is moving on that head movement as much as he is on the actual audible bark. There's the commissioner of the National Football League, Paul Tagliabue. You'd think a guy could get better seats than that being the commissioner of this thing <laughs> all the way in the last row. Got him out of our alignment. Second and five from the 34. The catch is made at the 29 by Sean Jefferson. And he tries to crawl out of bounds but can't. Which means San Diego will have to either use a timeout or hustle up to the line. And they choose to hustle they do. Yep. Keep the timeout. The 28-yard line. He calls for the first down. And this is... Harmon, he gets out of bounds. No game at the 28. Second down. Good move by Harmon. He knew all the way that he was not going to get anything out of that, and so he skipped to the sidelines. Stop the clock. 35 seconds remaining in the half. This is where Harmon is at his most effective now. He works so well out of the backfield as a receiver. Okay. Raiders certainly not unaware of that, but he's has been almost impossible for them to cover. Second and 11. Humphreys going deep and nobody home. And there's a marker down at the line of scrimmage. And Humphreys is shaking. And Humphreys holding his hand. Okay. Well, Hosteller had his left hand stepped on, and Humphreys holding his right thumb. And he calls for Gail Gilbert. He's actually signaling. Illegal formation on the offense. The tight end is covered up. We have Holden, number 47 on the defense. The penalty is offset. Replay, mm -hmm. second down. Stan, Stan Humphrey is taking a knee out of the field, and now he's going to come off. He's trying to regroup, but he's just not going to be able to do it. Gilbert comes in. He's played some this year for the Chargers. He's had to fill in when Stan missed the game. Ooh, right oh, and he's hit. Mm -hmm. He catches that hand as he's coming through on a, the follow-through. I think Chester McLaughlin was the Raider, and boy, that's when quarterbacks can really get hurt on the follow-through of that throwing motion. Second and 11, and again, there's no play here. Flags all over the joint. Harry Swain moved. <laughs> nice catch by the official. I mean, think about this division right now. Humphreys, you're watching him tonight. Haas, the concussion last week, the hand tonight. Elway, Montana, they're 
immediate futures in doubt in terms of action next week. And Meyer gone for the Before season. The snap. Number 72. Five yards. It's still second down. The thing with Stan Humphreys is when you get hit in that throwing motion, it can damage the hand, it can damage the elbow, it can damage the shoulder. They're all vulnerable when you are exerting yourself like that and following through. Again, another look at it right there. It's a direct hit with the hand, and, and we believe it to be Chester McLaughlin's hand. There's McLaughlin. On second and 15, Gilbert, the former Buffalo Bills, to Ronnie Harmon. And he takes it to the 20-yard line. He's still a little short of the first. Terry McDaniel makes the stop. Timeout, San Diego. Oh, he is exciting. Chargers have one timeout and 19 ticks when we crazy a moment ago he was trying to see if he could squeeze the ball. His passing hand, of course, he's wearing a huge brace on his left elbow that was dislocated three weeks ago. He had surgery on it on the 21st. So it's been rather a painful year for Stan Humphreys, who is known to have played with pain, but Right now, he took himself out with a sore thumb. Brent Musburger hosting halftime from New York. I had a chance to visit the other day with Napoleon McCallum, who had a terrible injury on opening night, and we'll check on his progress as part of our Lexus halftime report. Third down and two, and they convert as Alfred Papuno makes the catch, but he stays in bounds. That will compel San Diego to take its final timeout at the 16-yard line. So first down, and there is a live look at Napoleon McCallum. We'll hear from him at the half as the house. Bobby Ross had an up-and-down yo-yo career now in his third season. In 92, they were 11-5, 93-8-8, 93 coming into the night. You know, the, the scoreboard showing one timeout, but they've taken all three. I, I assume the Chargers know that. And they have first down with 14 seconds. So the last thing in the world you want to do here is complete a pass and have the receiver remain in bounds and run out of time before you can at least attempt a field goal. I'd be shocked working. if they were going off the scoreboard. Mm. Here you're working with your backup quarterback, Gail Gilbert. You either got to get it to a sideline or you got to get it into the end zone. Puts a little bit of a burden on Gail Gilbert. Gilbert looking, throwing, and he runs the risk of it, and Martin Moe with a great spin move oh, forward. Unbelievable. Oh. Donald Frank trying to make the stop, trying to keep him inbound, and instead he runs around them for the touchdown. What a play. And this crowd is cheering first that he caught the ball because he dropped those two touchdowns a week ago. He dropped one a short while ago. He makes a difficult play into a great play and gets the charge of six. What a put Frank rolling the situation trying to keep him in bounds. He keeps him in. They would have never got the field goal unit on in time to get the three. Pulls away from Frank. Super effort by Tony Martin. And Carney for the point after. Oof. That was wild. So each backup quarterback has come off the bench to throw a touchdown pass. Evans earlier for the Raiders. Gilbert here. Gilbert three of three to 34 yards. Mm. You know, Gilbert watched a lot, what, the last four Super Bowls up close and personal. Came from Buffalo. Fires a pretty good shot. Out completely across the field, and then Donald Frank trying to make the play to get Martin out of bounds, then or rather keep him in from, from going out of bounds. Martin with a good spin move. Such he a, has to feel good about that. Such, I mean, it's such a, I was thinking the same thing in terms of, I mean, last week he's one of the GOATs, even though they win the game, he drops two touchdown passes, and here he makes a, a really terrific and very heads-up play to score. Uh, Tony. Wacky game. We talked about those two that Tony dropped last week. They were right in his hands for six points. And having done that on occasion, I can tell you you don't get over it. Game time, 14 all. Raiders coming in, six and six, trying to Keep their playoff hopes very much alive, and the Chargers simply trying to wrap up the AFC West tonight. Rocket Ismael is back deep to receive the kick along with Alexander Wright. 
John Carney will send a bouncing ball to the 16-yard line. Alexander Wright, who scored a touchdown on the first offensive play of the night for the Raiders, brings it back out to the 33-yard line. As the clock ticks down and the first half comes to a conclusion. At the half, it's the Raiders 14 and the Chargers 14. And we'll return after this word from our ABC station. While first half, the game tied at 14. Jeff Hostetler, who was in and out as he was last week because of the concussion. And there is Gail Gilbert, who came on in relief of the injured Stan Humphreys at the end of the first half to hit Tony Martin for a touchdown reception to tie the game on a night when Art Shell's team desperately needs a win to go seven and six and stay very much in the thick of things for a wild card berth and Bobby Ross's team tries to clinch the AFC West after 13 games. Yeah, they'd like to clinch it tonight because the Chargers after tonight take on the San Francisco 49ers. They play the New York Jets and they close with the Pittsburgh Steelers and none of those would be what you call easy contests. If the Chargers can win all of their games, they would have home field advantage throughout the AFC playoffs. Even though they have the same mark as the Steelers, they'd have the advantage because they would have beaten the Steelers in the last game of the season. Kickoff taken by Rocket Ismail. He gets banged down up at the 28-yard line after the Carney kickoff, and it's Doug Miller who makes the tackle. And let's get an update from Lynn Swan on the sideline. Lynn? Al, I, I looked at Jeff Hostetler's hand when he came back in. He had a couple of cuts on three or four, but he's decided not to bandage up, and he'll come back and play. Jeff, but Stan Humphreys came out, and he injured that lower joint on his thumb, decided he'd come back in. He was warming up, throwing the football. Something was wrong. He went back into the locker room with the trainer and has not come back out yet. Mm. Al? All right, so Humphreys has a little time because the Raiders begin the third quarter with the football. Jeff Hostetler, the quarterback. Tom Rathman and Harvey Williams behind him in the backfield. They take it to Williams. And he guns it to Tim Brown up at the 38. He works his way to the 41. That's a Raider first down. And their passing game is clicking as effectively tonight as at any point this season. And that's only the second reception for their leading receiver, Tim Brown, of the night. And he does come up with the first down. Here are the halftime numbers. A decided advantage for the Los Angeles Raiders. But again, look at those penalties. 14 penalties in the first half. Wouldn't you love to have listened to Art Shell what he had to say to his club mm. in that locker room at halftime? First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Lover in motion. Harvey Williams takes it through the middle, gets two to the 44-yard line. He's tackled by Dennis Gibson, the former Lion. When the season began, Ty Montgomery was their lead running back, but the way it's evolved, Montgomery is inactive tonight, and Harvey's become the man. Montgomery only has a 2.7 per carry average, and that just isn't good enough in the National Football League. Harvey Williams averaging three and a half yards per carry for what has been a very anemic running game for the Raiders. Only 94 yards a game coming into tonight. Second and eight at the 44. Good protection for Haas. He hits Harvey Williams, and Williams is out of bounds at the 48-yard line. That's going to set up a third and four. That's Williams, number one draft pick of the Chiefs back in 91. That was his most productive year there, 447 yards. And he only became the featured back seven or eight weeks ago. Now coming back on the field is Stan Humphreys, and I don't know whether he maybe went in to spray that down or ice it or... See him working shoot it up or what? See him working that little squeezy there in his right hand, trying to limber that thumb up. And of course, it's all about pressure. Can he put enough pressure to grip that football to throw it effectively? Third and four, the play clock down to two. Boss looking, throwing, and it's incomplete, but there's a flag. We got a marker down intended for Rocket Ismail. Darian Gordon will get the penalty. Ishmael himself slipped and went to the turf. Hostetler had to carry that on the rollout further than he Holy wanted. Number 21 of the defense. Five yards. But the call. First down. They will put the flag on Gordon. I don't know what Gordon could have been thinking about. 
There you see him. He's just wrapped up all over Ishmael. And that's not even. Uh, that's, we've seen some penalties tonight that uh, are making it relatively easy on the officials. Nothing is uh, very borderline this evening. We're seeing some maulings and some muggings out on this field. Mm. First down, Los Angeles at the San Diego 47. 1251 left third quarter. The game tied at 14. Haas pressured. A flag is thrown. And down he goes in the arms of Chris Mims. That should be a holding call as well as a sack. Something that Jeff Hostetler has had to do all too much this year. Mm -hmm. Illegal use of hands to the face. Number 72 of the offense. The penalty of the crime. Second man. Jeff Hostetler has spent a lot of the year fighting for his life in this Raider pocket. That call against Mose Barr, but not really a factor. But Jeff Hosteller is a very mobile and a very athletic quarterback, and he has had to be here in 1994 for the Raiders. You know, Most, in name, Dan, this is a, a great offensive line, wouldn't you say? I you know, like 10 yards. A lot of good football ball. players. Really, the only question mark is Skrepanik at right tackle, the only youngster that's trying to evolve in. Gerald Perry at left tackle, a solid player. Most bar Wisniewski are, are Pro Bowl players. Kevin Gogan, uh, he comes over from the World Champion Cowboys. Uh, it is a very, very talented group. But from a pass protection standpoint, they haven't been getting it done. And from the running game standpoint, they haven't been getting it done. Penalty decline, six yard sack, second and 16 at the 47 yard line. Screen, Rackman breaks the tackle, slips down at the 50 yard line. Gordon stops him there. It'll be third down and 13. He broke the tackle of Junior Seau. Yeah, See, that's not a, uh, he's not one of those nifty runners. He tried to give you one of those Gail Sayer cutbacks, and he's got kind of a wide body for that kind of a move. A good look at Seau and how he is having trouble, in, trouble tackling. He does everything right, breaks through it, but just doesn't seem to have the strength to wrap up. Lynn Swan documented earlier about how he's got a pinched nerve that is causing him a strength problem in one arm and boy it was really evident there as he attempted to make that tackle. Third and 13. Hostetler. A little dump off to Harvey Williams. He has to get to the 37 for a first. Another flag is down. He gets to the 42 yard line. By the way when a penalty is declined it doesn't count in what seems to be an inexorable march by the Raiders toward a record. So that last one by Mosbar didn't count. Here you've got another one against the Raiders coming up and we had a good look at Junior oh, Seau yeah. struggling to get up he, he is hurt. Of hands to the face number 78 10 yards repeat third down Darrell Strepanak that one is accepted by that left arm of Junior Seau is limp almost at his side 78 Skrepanek working against Chris Mims with the hand on the face and they get he gets the flag. Well that would have brought up a fourth down would it not for the Raiders but the Chargers go ahead and accept the penalty put them into a third and even longer situation taking a chance here that they won't get the big yardage third and 23 from their own 40 yard line. Rackman and he gets thrown out of bounds up at the 50-yard line. They picked up 10, 4th, and 13. Carrington makes the tackle. And there is Junior again, obviously in agony. See that left arm is just hanging at his side. He's squeezing his fingers. And again, we have seen evidence again tonight that he has a hard time wrapping his arms, locking him in the tackle. And believe me, that would have been a different effort on Duke on the part of Junior Seau if that arm would have been all right. Jeff Gossett to punt. Line of scrimmage is the 50. Darian Gordon back to receive. <laughs> Angle line drive kick and Gordon makes the catch at the six yard line and gets away with it. Whoa. Brings it up to the 31. Is he exciting? Patrick Bates makes the stop. 45 yard kick, 26 yard run back. And 41 left in the third. This is Alex Spanos, who is the owner of the team, the chairman of the board, and the president, and a 
pretty proud man right now. He's been through some difficult years with this team, but they won the AFC West title in 92, and well, he's very nervous and very excited before the game. Had a nice visit with him. From the 31-yard line, Stan Humphreys back in the game. Throws, and it is tipped and nearly picked off. Patrick Bates got a hand on it. Second down. Yeah, we should get a pretty good read on the condition of Stan Humphreys' thumb. You could almost be assured that is very painful unless he went into the locker room and perhaps even shot it up. But that was a little bit of a flyer he delivered right there. The thing about Humphreys, he's one of the more unheralded quarterbacks in the league, but he has had enormous success in staying healthy and guiding this team. Well, illustrated in the second. Second down and ten. And Natron Means goes nowhere. He is tackled by Winston Moss behind the line of scrimmage. You know, you think of the great quarterbacks and how they have done as Mark Say is slow in getting up. And you think of the Montanas and the Youngs and guys like that. Well, Humphreys is right up there with them. There they are, active QBs. Steve Young with the best mark. Stan is right there. And then Montana with Kansas City is Mark 15 and 8. Kelly and Marino. That's pretty good company. This is a sixth round draft pick of Bobby Bether. That was Bobby Bether sitting with Alex Spanos a while ago. And Bether brought him here in 1990. And he's had a good run. Third and 11. Humphreys guns it, finds the open man. It's Tony Martin. And a first down, a third and long up to the 45 yard line. Bether, of course, drafted him when he Bethard was with the Washington Redskins. And sat around and did nothing with the Redskins. And then when Bobby came here, he knew the system. Uh, that they brought into the Chargers, so they got Bobby Humphreys. And in 1992, he had over 3,000 yards throwing the ball here. He's had some good years. Well, if we were wondering if he had the ability to grip it yeah. firmly enough to throw the long ball, that should have answered a question. Tony Martin, one of the Bethard acquisitions, making the catch. Natron Means gets a yard, a yard and a half. The, the, the Raiders have done a nice job tonight bottling up Natron Means. Well, it's not really a surprise. The Raiders play the run better than most teams in the league. They're giving up less than 100 yards a game running the football. Only 92 yards for this proud Raiders defense. And you figured there is Ralph Friedgen, the offensive coordinator of the San Diego Chargers, and his running game is not what he'd like to see tonight. But I don't think they're shocked by that. Tough yards against the Raiders. Natron Means, 10 carries for 17 yards at second and nine, and the catch is made at the 50-yard line by Shannon Mitchell, the rookie tight end out of the University of Georgia, tackled by Winston Moss. It'll be third down and five. In the first Raider game this year, won by the Chargers in that comeback, Natron Means only had 52 yards in that game. It was a comeback, too. The Raiders were down 23-3 to going into the final quarter. Came back to lead at 24 to 23 and the Chargers had to make good on fourth down in the final moments to play to get the field goal to win it. And it was a limping Stan Humphreys that led them on that comeback. He came back in after being hurt. Third and five and the catch is made by Mark Say. And he works his way down to the 29 in the first down where he's tackled by Albert Lewis. Bobby Humphrey, Humphrey again. His his second comeback effort against the Raiders this year. He's tough. Dislocated that elbow. And that is one of the most painful things you can do. He missed one game. Take a look at Say working underneath one man across the middle. Catches a zone. And exploits it down inside the 30. First and 10 at the 29-yard line. Take reverse. Natron Mean. Plows his way down to the 22-yard line. Picked up a seven. Greg Beekert making the stop. 7:05 remaining third quarter. The game tied at 14. Well, that makes all the difference in the world when you're able to crank off some positive yardage on first down running the football. Now the the hand is full for the San Diego Chargers here facing a second and three or four. This is really where you can make something happen offensively. At the 22-yard line. Second and a short four. Natron Means bangs his way down to the 19-yard line and close to a first down. 
We widen that. You see where the chains are. Very often taking a look, and he says he's going to measure. Bring the sticks in. You know, Mark Say, the receiver for San Diego, the story's been told many times, of course, but he's the guy who was shot protecting his niece in 1988 in a gunfire incident. He was a, an innocent bystander, lost a kidney, started with San Francisco, and there he is, Mark Say, who's been very instrumental tonight in particular on this drive and having a fine season. Yeah, but the wide receivers, he is the leading receiver, the leading receiver coming into tonight. Ronnie Harmon, who works primarily out of the backfield. It is a first down as the Chargers keep advancing at the 19-yard line, first and 10. Means, Means is going to throw it, and nobody is there. He had Shannon Mitchell oh. open, and Nathan Means couldn't get it to him. I think we just saw why they don't use this very often. A little adrenaline rush there by Nitras. <laughs> he, he neutroned that ball as he threw it only about 10 yards farther than he should have. That was such an easy six points. <laughs> that was his first attempt and probably last of the season. <laughs> Mitchell comes in motion, oh. which he's been doing all night long. Looks like a lead blocker at the point of attack. There's Mitchell at the top of your screen. This and, fake. Yep. Oh, just put it Whoa. up. <laughs> <laughs> On second and ten, Humphreys guns one to the nine. Flag is thrown. Trapp says he trapped it. Did say, but you got a marker down at the 13. I wonder what their completion percentage was in practice when they run that play with Natron <laughs> Means showing up to Mitchell. I, I can only assume he demonstrated a better touch on the football than he did on that play. He was 0 for 1 was <laughs> Means last year and 0 for 1 this season as well. Number 26 is the defense. Yards, first down. Wow, we would have seen a third and ten. I think meant 29, I believe. Albert Lewis was yeah. on the coverage, and they do not have a 26 back there. Boy, that would have brought up a tough play for the San Diego Chargers. Instead, that'll be an automatic first down. Raiders making a strong run for a record from penalties. Chalk up another one. That is 16. Again, the NFL mark is 22, a mark that has stood for 50 years. Well, how it's, it's, in, it's in jeopardy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Only on Monday night. Yeah, well, and aren't we thrilled yep. to see it? And they're on their way to a team record. They're one shy of that, and we have 20 minutes of regulation remaining. <laughs> on first down, it's Means. Picking up about three. 525 left third quarter. The game tied at 14. Bobby Ross pacing the sidelines, and the Chargers taking a lot of time off that clock. This drive started back at their own 31 yard line. Change up front for San Diego. Joe Cacuzzo, the left guard, is out of the game, and Curtis Whitley, the backup center, is uh, playing that spot at the moment. Whitley, there was one scenario they had so much trouble with their H backs and tight ends that they might have to use him there. Second and seven from the 11. Humphreys pressure slips to his left flag thrown pass incomplete intended for Jefferson covered by Anderson and Harry Swain is hurt he's been shaken up most of the night and he's bent over and might be the recipient of the holding call as well number 72. Well, I had to guess. I'd say you're right. Huh? How many more bars can you get on that face mask? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Holding number 72 of the defense. 10 yards. Repeat second down. If he got any more bars on that thing, he wouldn't be able to see through it. I don't think I've ever seen a face mask quite that uh, quite that heavily decorated. There it is moving into our picture. Chester McLaughlin, the defensive lineman for the Raiders, is working on Swain, and he forces that hold. It's second down and 17. This is the 11th play of the drive, 445 left from the third. On second and 17, it's Means on a draw. He lost the football at the 20-yard line. 
Wait for the official to signal. And the Raiders have the football. So the long drive ends in futility. Oh, does that hurt? And does that give a lift to the Raiders? Anthony Smith was there. McLaughlin was there making the initial tackle. Eddie Anderson is the guy that comes out of it with the football. Anthony Smith, he comes in from the outside. He's the one that forced the fumble. I, I still couldn't see it. Mm. One of Terry Bradshaw and Franco Harris get residuals. How many times have we looked at that play over the years? Now well, we're looking at Junior Seau here. He's back in the game as the Raiders, after the fumble recovery, have the football at the 20 yard line. 4.38 left, third quarter. The game tied at 14. Cost shouting to be heard. Play clock is down to three. And they begin this drive with a Harvey Williams off tackle for two. Junior Seau right there to stop him. Second and eight. Tackle by Junior Seau. Well, Junior Seau is toughing it out. This is a definite case of why some guys are stars and earn the big bucks. Hurting doesn't make a difference, and that is this bad arm, and he's still forced to make the tackle. And let me tell you something. When you have to do something with something that hurts, look at him yell for the crowd. Yeah. That could mean a blitz for the Chargers. Second and seven. Game of three, up at the 23. Flag. Incomplete. Brown, the intended receiver, say out, providing the coverage that time. Got a hand on it. And there are two flags now. <laughs> if it's against the Raiders, that'll be 17. It also could be declined. De number 98, lined up in the neutral zone. Five yards, hmm. repeat second down. Well, Skrepanak is hurt. The penalty is against Sean Lee for lining up in the neutral zone, and Arch Shell comes out to check firsthand the condition of Greg Skrepanak. Injury timeout. His teammate Kevin Gogan landed right on top of him. We'll take a look at this thing right here. Skrepanak finds himself in an awkward position blocking Mims 94. There's Gogan to the right. He comes out to block Mims. Watch him land right there on top of Skrepanek. Gogan is programmed at 310 pounds. And uh, Skrepanek prone on the field had an exposed flank and Gogan landed right on it. Escorted off by Evans and Ismail. And his spot is taken by the longtime former Ram, Robert Jenkins. There is Jenkins, number 64. It is second down and two after the penalty on San Diego. Game tied at 14. Haas buys time. Shoots one over the middle. The catch is made up at the 40-yard line. Hosteller hurt. Brown and made the catch. 13-yard pickup. Oh, and look at Ooh. Jack and Hosteller. He's going after Jerry Austin, the referee. Obviously thinking that he should have uh, thrown a flag. Leslie O'Neill coming around the first down Raiders at Robert Jenkins and gave Hosteller quite a shot in the back. Here comes number 91, sensing he's got an easy prey, and Robert Jenkins turns it on and he really nails Hosteller. Yeah, he gets sandwiched between Jenkins, Mims, and O'Neill. On first down, Harvey Williams breaks a couple of tackles in the backfield and turns a two-yard loss into a two-and-a-half-yard game tackle by Darian Gordon. Strepanak getting the attention. They are rubbing away, trying to work the knots out. Gogan, actually, when he landed on him, did him a favor because he kept... Mims from getting a good shot on Hosteller was a good hustling play by Gogan. Just unfortunate that he landed on Skrepanek. Second and eight at the 43-yard line. The game tied at 14, late third quarter. Haas. Gets the first down. He's out of bounds at the 46-yard line. He was sprung by a Tim Brown block. There's Napoleon McCallum and Civvies on the sideline. And Junior Seau visiting as well. Hostetler's uh, still hot from that last play. Um, Junior Seau just barely touched him as he went out, and Hostetler threw the ball at him. But what starts it all is, again, Hostetler's pocket just evaporates around him. 
He's all the way out here because he has no choice. Oh, and Junior Seau just on. brushed him in the back. Get it together, Jeff. Jeff's a little He's uh, so frustrated, but it is. Hughes getting a little short. Seau did absolutely nothing. And I like Seau's reaction to Hostetler. He did nothing. Well, if Hostetler should be upset with anybody right now, it should be his line. He's running for his life. First and ten at the 46-yard line. Fake. Toss comes out to West Bender. Back up fullback. Oh, and Haas to the got 40-yard line. And Haas shaking again. This oh. time Mims just unloaded on him as he released the ball. Well, Mims discards Robert Jenkins, who's having to sub for Skrepanek at right. Watch this throw right there in the middle of your screen. Whoa! Goodbye, Mr. <laughs> Jenkins. <laughs> This. You think they're not rubbing on Skripenek? Uh, this is some front four for the San Diego Chargers, and they are having open season on Jeff Hostetler. Second and three at the 39-yard line. Calvin Jones is in there, and the rookie from Nebraska picks up the first down as he's tackled by Mims, and the Raiders keep marching with the game tied and a minute eight to go in the third. This might be a good time for the Raiders to make an attempt to establish some semblance of a running game. Certainly for the health of Jeff Hostet for no other reason than that. First and ten, Los Angeles at the San Diego 34. And Harvey Williams continues to sit this out. Jones, the running back, he stays in the block, and it's dropped in the hands of James Jett and out of the hands of James Jett. Second down. That was a simple case of James Jett was thinking about running the football before he caught it. He's got pretty good hands. Jones out of West Virginia, great speed, we know about that. You have to respect that, so he drives downfield. Yes, I'm going to run with it before I get it. Look it all the way in. You see the frustration on his face. Second and ten at the 34. Excellent protection, but the secondary does its job, and Haas just flings it away. Third down. Well, the Raiders are going to go into the fourth quarter in a very tight game, in a critical game, and we mentioned at the very beginning tonight, in crunch time, they have not come up big. They've been outscored in the fourth quarter of the season, 98 to 49. Well, their starting backfield checks back in. Tom Rathman and Harvey Williams, both of them good receivers in what is a passing situation, you would think, for the Raiders here on third and ten. Both of these guys good out of the backfield. Well, that's Tim Brown on the move, trying to get him into single coverage, too. On third and ten. Hosteller flings one over the middle. The catch is made, but short of the first down. Ismael makes the catch. It's an eight-yard gain. It takes it to the 26-yard line, and it's going to be fourth down and two when the fourth quarter begins, because that will do it for period number three. That's well within field goal range to untie this. So we played 45 minutes. The game is tied at 14, and we'll return with the fourth quarter of Monday Night Football after this word from our ABC station. And try to field goal from the other end, but it is absolutely a perfectly still night here in San Diego. No wind whatsoever, so either end it doesn't make a difference. 43 yards, Jeff Gossett to hold it. Jeff Jager to try to boot it through. Mm -hmm. Right down the middle. And the Raiders are back on top again. 44 yard field goal try is good by Jeff Jager. Advantage. Andre Coleman, the rookie from Kansas State, drops back to receive the catch. Coleman pulls it in at the eight yard line. Up past the 20. Up past the 30 yard line. And Coleman can't be taken down from behind at the 50. Gets all the way to the 24 yard line. Dan Land finally catches him. Land saved in his third round draft pick. Andre Coleman out of Kansas State broke a big.
Well, Dan Land, who got his share of publicity in the first half, comes up big here for the Raiders. That was a sure touchdown. Andre Coleman had only Land to beat. Look at the good blocking by the wedge. Good acceleration there. Yeah. Usually, the Chargers are watching other teams run them back against them. This is a big-time effort by Andre Coleman, the rookie from Kansas State. 68-yard kickoff return for a man averaging 26 yards per return. Very good. Natron Means gets taken down by McDaniel after he picks up a first down at the 13-yard line. Coleman accepting adulation on the sideline and Means behind a Curtis Whitley block first down. He's been bottled up most of the night. And he just unleashed all his frustrations here. He knocked his own man out of it. Well, he Hitting got some... Tony Martin first and then slamming into the Raiders. And he got a couple key blocks by Curtis Whitley and Shannon Mitchell that got him started. High formation this time. First and 10 at the 13. Out of the eye. Means swings to the outside. He gets strung out and taken down. Nice defensive play. Anthony Smith right there to haul him down for a loss of two. If you can make Natron Means change directions, if you can make him try to bounce it to the outside, you have really done 90% of the job of bottling him up. And that's exactly what had to happen there. He is a bulldozer, a power back, and if you can clog the initial point of attack, you're really helping yourself out a lot. And the nemesis for the Raiders for so many years is in there, Ronnie Harmon. Second and 12. Humphreys has time. He throws. The catch is made at the six by Mark Say, and he's bounced back from that spot by Albert Lewis. It'll be third down and two. Make it three. Okay. All right. <laughs> Critical down here in the red zone. Plenty of time for Humphreys as they protect him so well. Speaking of the red zone, San Diego trouble converting only 40% getting into the end zone. Only Cincinnati is worse. That's why John Carney has so many field goals. Yes, 29. On third and three, Humphreys throws. Say was the intended receiver, but Stan was forced because Mike Jones came blitzing through the linebacker to throw earlier than he wanted. Well, John Fox, the defensive coordinator of the Raiders, comes with the blitz, and boy, it paid off big. Paid off real big. That play had no chance of happening. John Carney has two points tonight, and he seeks his 30th field goal of the season. He'll also take the NFL lead in scoring away from Emmett Smith if he converts here. Pretty good, too. If he makes this, he'll be, what, 30 out of 33. 24-yard attempt to tie the game. And he bangs it through, and so the Andre Coleman kickoff return sets up a field goal. The cannon sound, 12-34, left team is the score. 12-34, left in regulation. Great crowd in San Diego tonight. Carney sends it down to the five-yard line. It is taken there by Rocket Ismael. And they turn him into a prop job as he only gets it back to the 19. Leading the charge for San Diego is Eric the Enemy. 12-25, left in the fourth. Raiders have it at their own 19-yard line. First and 10. 12-25, left in the fourth quarter. The game is tied at 17. Hostetler buying time, throwing pass made Tim Brown. Brown out past the 40 to midfield. Tackled at the 49. Flag down. Darian Gordon stopped him. Could that have been a face mask? That's the first thing that crosses your mind uh -huh. when you see open field like that. Yeah. 31 yard gain, and you saw the flag come in at the end. Face mask. On the tackle, by the tackler, five yards, tacked on from the end of the run, first down. Gordon, I think that's only the third reception of the night for Tim Brown. And a good look at what Hostetler, reception, and a good look at what Hosteller can do when he gets some time. The offensive line that time did a good job, and there is, right there, it's the right hand of Darian Gordon on the face mask of Tim Brown. And along that line, Strepanak is back in. And Dan Turk is the center with Mosbar out. 
Harvey Williams on a pretty ugly looking handoff takes it to the 43. Well, Turk, Turk had to fill in for Mosbar last week in the Pittsburgh game when the ankle brought him out. We go to Miami next week. It's our only look on Monday Night Football this season at the Dolphins. And that, of course, means Dan Marino. We don't know about Joe Montana. It does not look particularly promising. It's a vital game for both teams, especially in light of losses incurred by both yesterday. Kansas City against Miami. Good matchup from Joe Robbie Stadium next Monday night. Hey, Bono wasn't bad yesterday. Yeah. Well over 300 yards against Denver. Second and eight from the 43. Haas throws. Brown makes the catch. Nice slip move to pick up the first down and a lot more. Now he uh, goes into 27. Oh, what a weapon he is. He is up and over 1,000 yards receiving now this season. And Tom Walsh, the offensive coordinator, has gotten the ball into Brown's hands five times tonight. He's averaging just under 15 yards of reception, and so many of the receptions are like this one. Short underneath, four or five yards, and he turns into a big gainer just by his running ability. Tim Brown, that NFL record, 20 guys over 1,000 in any given season is in peril. Short count. Handoff for a two-yard game goes to Harvey Williams. Well, you tighten up the rules on defensive backs. It's really not much of a surprise that receivers are going to be running around all over the place. Not a surprise at all. Playing corner in this league was always tough. It's a whole lot tougher here in 1994. Well, just calling that new, calling the old rule is having a tremendous impact on this game. And well, the next year when they start drafting receivers, they're going to be the big ones. Second and eight at the 25. Haas dumps it underneath. The catch is made by West Bender. He is rolled out a yard and a half shy of the first down by Darren Carrington. It'll be third and a long one. West Bender, a backup running back, first-year player out of USC, has caught his first two balls of the season tonight. Yeah, that was a fine tackle from the open field by Carrington. Bender was on his way to at least a first down, and a good tackle by number 29, Darren Carrington. Third and a long one. Calvin Jones. And Tom Rathman in the backfield. And it's Jones picking up the first down. The rookie takes it to the 15-yard line. First and 10. 920 remaining in the fourth quarter. The game tied at 17. Seau again. Uh, going playing through a very painful pinched nerve. And playing through it, that's exactly what he's doing. He, again, a missed tackle, but you have to understand a lot of football players that probably would not be in there. And who knows, maybe he shouldn't be. First down at the 15-yard line, Jones and Bender in the backfield. Hostetler hits Brown. Oh. And Tim goes down at the 7-yard line. Well, the first guy hasn't got Tim Brown to the ground so far this half. David Griggs was the first guy to miss, then another guy missed, and Bill Arnsbarger has got to be wondering, what do I have to do to get these guys to get Tim Brown down? Quick move back to the inside. There goes Griggs. There goes Seau. Finally to the ground, but boy, good, good moves by Timmy Brown. Brown gets the ball on the sideline, second down and two. And Jones can only pick up one of those two. He's tackled by Gibson, setting up a critical third and one at the six-yard line. Calvin Jones, ball carrier. Tim Brown, but you think about this, Denver made a tremendous offer to try to procure Brown. The Raiders had the right to match, and they matched. And that meant the Broncos then set their sights on Anthony Miller, the great San Diego receiver, and that's why Miller is with Denver right now. Miller had 89 receptions here a year ago. They not only lost Miller, the leading receiver, they lost their leading rusher in Marion Buck. Third and a long one. And Haas puts it in the end zone, and a great catch with a touchdown by Ismael. Oh, what a great catch it was to Al. Yeah, he may have bruised palms in handling that ball. What a rocket shot by Jeff Hospital. That 
redefines putting zip on the ball. Well, if we get a close-up of him catching that ball, too, he did it in the classic way. He didn't reverse his hands like most receivers would. Kept the right hand above the left hand. Such a temptation to put that left hand up first. And he didn't. And he hangs on. Good concentration and a good effort by Ishmael. Got position on Gordon to make the catch. Jager to tack on the extra point. And Los Angeles is back up again by seven. So Brown helps lead them down there. The Rocket makes it pay off. 7.23 remaining in regulation as the Raiders now lead it by a score of 24. So here it comes down to the seven-yard line. Andre Coleman, who had a 68-yard return the last time he touched the football, brings this one back to the 27. And he is tackled there by 10-7, 17-14. And now 24-17. Chargers have it first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. 7-10 to go in the fourth quarter. And the catch is made by Shannon Mitchell, the rookie tight end, who's driven out of bounds by Greg Beekert. First down at the 40. Well, the Chargers are getting a lot of football from a free agent in this year's draft, Shannon Mitchell from Georgia. This guy has obviously not a guy they counted on to get a lot out of this year, and he has been forced to play because of the injuries to Papuno and Young, and man, has he come through. He moves well. He sure does. There he is, big man. In motion is Mitchell. Take it to Means. Humphrey's going for the ball. He's got Jefferson out in front and overthrows him. Terry McDaniel started to catch up with him, but he had position and was there, and the ball was too deep. Humphreys loves to do this every now and then just let it fly and as you can see he was there Larry mm. McDaniel he was going for an earlier move and Jefferson was open that was 57 yards in the air on the throw yeah, unfortunately though it only needed to be about 52 right <laughs> it was pretty though spiral nice Natron means stop for no gain. It's going to be third and ten. We'll probably remove all question about Stan Humphrey's thumb, however. Mm -hmm. Third and ten at the 40. 623 remaining, fourth quarter. by Albert Lewis. Humphrey's under pressure. Fires. Say can't make the catch. It's incomplete. Flag down. Oh, I think Humphrey's been shot in the head. Anthony Smith was there with him. Personal foul. Number 94. Shot to the head. First down. That's a killer. Uh, that Instead of fourth and ten, first down. Boy, you just can't live with him. Boy, you get, you get everything you ask for from your front four. You harass the quarterback. You make him move. You make him throw off balance. <laughs> and that right forearm of Anthony Smith lands on the face mask of Stan Humphreys, and that draws the call. <laughs> Certainly didn't appear to be any sort of an attempt to injure Humphreys yeah. or... But it's so clearly defined, and you're yeah. going to get a flag every time you do it. What you say, Dan, though, was uh, confirmed by Shell. Shell looked at the replay, and that's when he started yeah. barking at the official. Here's Natron Means, chased by Fredrickson, and Lewis drives him out of bounds after a gain of eight. And you saw the earlier graphic with a flag down here that the Raiders have tied their team record for most penalties in the game. Number 72 of the offense. Ten yards, repeat first down. And this one is against Harry Swain of San Diego. Five horizontal bars on that mask. Now that is one you want to cover up and hide. When yeah, that that, that seven, mask two. has really got to Dan. <laughs> and a whole bunch of verticals, too. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, oh, well, you have five in a row and then two at the bottom. Seven. And then he, I guess there's one on the top there. He looks like he's into fencing or something. He's, uh, he's looking out of a couple peepholes about all he's left. That's a tough call there on the charge. Makes it first and 20 at the 45-yard line. Get in there now, Anthony. Humphreys avoids the sack, and that's a big avoid. 
it's incomplete, but he would have been tackled back at the 28th. That would have been a 12-yard sack instead it's incomplete. It would have been second and 32 instead it'll be second and 20. That would have been a 17-yard sack, I think, mm. all the way back where he was. That was, and Anthony Smith yeah, right. had it. Anthony Smith had it. That's amazing that Humphreys got out of this. There's Anthony Smith who has his jersey and oh, just loses his grip at the last moment and almost got it in. Stan Humphreys, though, a pretty stocky guy at 225 pounds, showed some strength. Second and 20. Jefferson can't make the catch. It'll be third and 20. You know, that's one where maybe Humphrey's thumb bothered him there. He grabbed it right after he threw the ball. Jefferson, very open. You can almost see the pain on his face. One who could have been caught by Jefferson, but he did throw it low and in front of him. Still should have caught that one, you think. Uh -huh. Chargers are faced now with a third and 20. Four-man rush. Humphreys throws, and it's incomplete. Hit as he threw it. Alberto White got an arm on him, and it'll be fourth down and 20 and a punt. And a, <laughs> and a very rare smile from Art Shell. Not very demonstrative on the sideline. And that, take a picture of that one, folks. You don't see it all that often. 522 remaining in the fourth quarter now this has not Number been the Raiders quarter on either side of the ball all season long and you know what that was very close to being a fumble Stan's arm hadn't started forward when it was hit by White Brian Wagner to punt Tim Brown full score and makes a fair catch at the 13 yard line 13 teams, or almost half the league, will be either 6 and 7 or 7 and 6, and 25 teams are still eligible for the playoffs with three weeks to go. Just the most ever. Wanted. Well, the most ever, isn't it? Yep. And what more can you ask for in the month of December? I, yeah. As far as fan interest is concerned, it's, his, it's really what the league was looking for, and it keeps people into it all around the country. I think it's a good deal. Only Tampa Bay, Cincinnati, and Houston are guaranteed they'll be home to watch the playoffs on television. The Raiders trying to eat up some clock as Harvey Williams picks up a yard. Actually, Tampa Bay, believe it or not, is, is still alive. The other team is, is Washington. The Redskins are one of the three. And the Buccaneers are still alive. That's how quickly we got a call from Sam Weiss. <laughs> We're talking about mathematically alive. Yes, uh, mathematically alive. The Raiders, uh, their sense of urgency tonight, I mean, you can feel it up in the booth. And for a team ball, six and seven, they feel they're out of it. And for a team that has been struggling to find a running game, boy, could the Raiders use one now. Second and nine, Haas using as much of the play clock as he can. And now back to pass. Throws. Tim Brown having a big night up to the 18-yard line. It's going to set up a third down and five. And this is a very critical play for the San Diego defense right here. Tim Brown is the best part of the running game, throwing the four or five yard hitch or a little short slant over the middle and then let him run after he catches the football. I want to toss a kudos to our crew tonight. They have mm. been brilliant. Fabulous. The pictures tonight have been superior. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks. It is third and five now. A vital play. The Chargers will have to stop them here or be forced to use some timeout. And Hostetler throws. Williams makes the catch. He's a buffer car, and down he goes at the 20-yard line. Sean Van Horst stops him. They'll get the ball back, and they can serve all of their timeouts to the Chargers. Good defensive effort. They needed that. Now they need an extraordinary effort by Darian Gordon, who's becoming quite a hero here in San Diego. Country turn for a touchdown in the Raider game, the first game of 90 yards. Then a 75 yarder last week in their game against the Rams. Jeff Gossett. It's a low liner. It's a 36 yard kick and a fumble and a recovery by Gordon. He holds on at the 44. 
It's starting to drizzle, a light drizzle, with three minutes even remaining and a lot of time, as you see the drizzle reflected there. Three minutes and three timeouts plus the two-minute warning, so a ton of time. Gordon, I think when you get a low kick like that, every punt returner knows those are the kinds you can run right down their throat. They don't have a chance to cover it. And I think he was just got a little bit of ahead of himself, didn't concentrate, bobbled the ball, but pulled it together, made the recovery, and the charges are in good field position. From the 44-yard line, Humphreys goes to work. He drops it off underneath from Natron Means. He gets out to the 50-yard line. That's a gain of six. Fredrickson makes the tackle, second down and four. And the Chargers being pretty nonchalant in the way they're executing this thing, going back to the huddle. I know they've got all three timeouts, but uh, they sure don't look like a group in a real big hurry. A little more urgency here, I think, might be in order. Second and four. They need a touchdown, not three, and then the two-point rule might even have to come into consideration. They took 31 seconds between plays, and Means goes nowhere. So that's a wasted half minute and this crowd game and this crowd knows what's going on they'll go down to the two minute warning here but a lot of time got burned off that clock and a very big play coming they're going to go in fourth down and they need seven points to tie it eight points can win it Ronnie Harmon in motion Humphrey pressure Flings one, too high, incomplete, intended for Mark Say, fourth down and three. Oh, Stan shaking his head, mm -hmm. and I think maybe the thumb might have factored into that pass. Well, he's, he was buffeted around Say. with good pressure from the Raiders, but that was a poorly thrown ball. Well, he's having to backpedal his way out of that pocket. That was good pressure by the, by the Raiders. They came that time with just their four down linemen. It's a big plus when you can get a rush out of just four. Fourth and three at the 49-yard line. Humphreys on a vital play. It's incomplete. Good coverage. Pass high. Say the intended receiver. James Trapp is right there. Raiders will get it. And the Chargers still have all three timeouts. So they will be able to stop the clock. But the best thing they can hope for now is field position that's not going to be very good. I think it's just the effort by Stan Humphreys. Two flyers in a row. He's too good a passer to have this thing happen like that. I think the thumb has got to be a major consideration of the way he's throwing the ball here in the second half, shaking his head. So here comes Hostetler. They'll use up what they can on the ground, and the Chargers will take all three timeouts here and then hope to block a punt. 24-17 Raiders. The ball at the 50-yard line with a minute and 50 to go in regulation. Lover in motion. Harvey Williams. Stop for no gain. Timeout San Diego. Ever there was a time to run the football with both hands, both arms, everything you have wrapped around the football. Now is the time for the Raiders to do so. Well, then you know, Dan, they're <laughs> discussing that in each huddle no penalties because you don't want to stop the clock on your own <laughs> as hard as that is to imagine the Raiders not having a penalty in this situation but no penalties to stop the clock you don't put the ball on the ground the Raiders do prevail they'll have Denver coming up and then they'll travel to Seattle and San Diego to run the table 49ers next week then at the Jets and then Pittsburgh here Second and nine. Williams swings to the outside. And San Diego takes another timeout here. And With 139, it'll be third down and 10 at the 50-yard line. And Seau is just struggling to get up. Here is a guy who is, he is in bad okay. shape. Won't quit. The only team it's in the, the AFC Chargers. right they now that has clinched a playoff spot, as you look at Junior again, are the Pittsburgh week, Steelers. You see he's not even Chris using Smith. the left arm. He has first. not the Rams, throughout the entire Jackie course Slayer. of the evening. Same was true a week ago, and I, I just must assume that 
medical staff of the Chargers have determined that it's not going to cause any further damage. You certainly would like to think that, but when you're talking about any kind of a pinched nerve, I don't know how you can be sure of it. No, I don't know either, Frank. This has been a good football game. Mm -hmm. This has been two teams that went after each other. Really, the only drawback to this game was all the penalties against the Raiders. That's, that's sloppy. But talk about a team that, that came up to playing with a sense of urgency. Tonight it was the Los Angeles Raiders. Yeah. My head's not really that big, is it? <laughs> Another team. Uh, we're not going to tell you it is. Uh, third down and 10 at the 50-yard line. No wonder I can't get baseball hats from Joe. <laughs> and Hostetler on a little roll. And then he goes down, and the Chargers take a timeout. Well, that's his... As much as San Diego could hope for, the ball Raiders could only use up about 20 seconds. And you eliminate uh, that play eliminates any possibility to fumble, mm -hmm. and they're close to midfield. It's not going to affect them on the punt. So it was a good call. Well, they just uh, the Raiders just need a good snap and Gossett to get it away now. Yeah, but unfortunately, the guy that's back this there is going to be Darian Gordon. On the next game sponsor, the there he is. This that guy will not be lost on the Raiders. I don't think. <laughs> I can only assume that uh, Gossett's going to try to kick this thing out of bounds. He might kick this sideways. Yeah. The other other beneficiary of a Raider win tonight would be the Pittsburgh Steelers because. The Steelers would then be in the position to control their own fate and have home field advantage through the playoffs. At the moment, that belongs to San Diego, where they too have won every game the rest of the way. I'll tell you, the Steelers have done a great job this year. They might be playing, I think they probably are playing the best football in the AFC, certainly. They are a dominating, tough football team. Well, you look at the things you need to win, play great defense, have a good running game and good special teams. They don't have a thrilling passing game, that's for sure. But on those first three counts, they are solid. Humphreys awaiting his turn. Dan Turk to snap it. And it's an angle kick. It's a beauty oh, by Gossett. Out of bounds at the eight-yard line. Got it. All he, kick. all he could get and avoided the run back. Yep. That's the best punt that Jeff Gossett has made in a long time. And the first and yeah. first and ten at the eight. Humphrey throws a little too high for Ronnie Harmon, covered on the play by Rob Fredrickson. Second down. Boy, a lot of confidence in the Raiders in this rookie Fredrickson. I think that's indicative of what they they think of him to, in a critical situation like this, let a rookie go one on one with Ronnie Harmon. This, this guy here not only justifies the number one draft pick, but he's he's going to be a good one in this league for a long time. Second and ten at the eight. Harmon. He's out of bounds a little short of the first down. Stops the clock, but they'll have to convert. It's third down and one, and it starts to come down. It rained this morning. The streets were wet when we got up. Cleared up during the day, and here it comes again, lightly. Third and one. Up an awful lot of time. To the air he goes, and it is caught by Jefferson, and he gets it out to the 39-yard line. First down, tackled by Patrick Bates, and now they're 61 yards away. 23-yard pickup on a third and one. Raiders taking a lot of time to get to their side of the line. Humphreys to the air again. Floats one. Harmon makes the catch, tries to get out of bounds. Good and good. can. He's to the 48, but that's a first down. Fredrickson makes the tackle. Clock ticking down, 45, 44. Humphreys has to think about putting it in the ground and does right here. So 37 seconds and second down. Associate Director, second down and 10 at the 48-yard line. Humphreys. The flag is thrown, and the catch is not made. Harmon dropped it. Incomplete flag down at the 43-yard line. Stan Brock holding San Diego. I think Alberto White was the guy that uh, was working, and Stan Brock... Talk about out in the middle of nowhere where everybody in the stadium could see what was happening. 
gets locked up with White. There he is right there. White's 96. Brock, but look at this. <laughs> uh, that, <laughs> talk nope. about separating yourself from the crowd. Well, you understand that, though, Dan. That quarterback oh, yeah. rolls out of the pocket, and you all of a sudden the pressure is off you, and you have to grab have two fouls on the offense. Number 33 went out of bounds and came back in and was the first to touch. That penalty is declined. Holden, number 67 of the offense. That penalty is accepted. Ten yards, repeat second down. Well, the other thing, Stan Brock doesn't have any idea where Stan Humphreys is. His face mm -hmm. is buried in the chest of Alberto White. And the rest of our gang, Ed McKenna, Jim Lakata, Mike Farrell, Fred King, one. Brian Gordon, Steve Hurd, our unparalleled director of information. Second down and 20 now at the 42-yard line. Humphreys throws. Oh. Harmon makes the catch. He's kept in bounds by Albert Lewis. It'll be third down and uh, 15. Big play there by Lewis. Harmon obviously was thinking out of bounds. And on third and 15, Humphreys retreats. Humphreys going deep. And too deep. And it is taken down by Donald Frank. Incomplete. Fourth down. Yep. So one more Hail Mary, and that'll do it. And our gang up here in the booth, Andrea Bryant, keeping us uh, sane. Is that what it is? Yep. So to speak, George yeah. Hill, our statistician, and Malibu Kelly Hayes, our spotter, through the years. And you. A lot of superlatives tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, the Raiders have done tonight a couple of things they haven't done all year. That long passing game worked brilliantly, and in the fourth quarter, they rose to the occasion. Barring a penalty, final play of the game. And down goes Humphreys. Aaron Wallace puts the exclamation point on a victory in a game the Raiders had to have. And then you could be right. They could turn the table. They could. This is the kind of thing that can get a team started. To Big exhibit win. that, yep. you'll have to exhibit the consistency that's been lacking through this season. And they have Denver and Kansas City at home and Seattle away. But this was, not mathematically, but in every other way, do or die for the Raiders. And they did. Fun to watch. Magic number for the Chargers in the West is still one. Till next week in Miami, Al Michael Franken for Dan Hugo, Lynn Swan. Good.